Okay then, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, before we start the actual planning meeting, we have a presentation, I think, from Matthew Dennis Berman Homes, Chris Lowthead Berman Homes, and Matthew Woodhead, DHA Planning, who are working in partnership with the Vincent Trust to deliver a mixed use development forming part of the wider Lady Dane Farm development and will provide an update. So over to you, chaps. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Go on, Matt, do you want to kick off? Yeah, so I just uh, would we'll just do a quick introduction, Shri, first. So um, my name's Matthew Woodhead. I may well have met um, some of you previously. I've been working on this site for well, a good many years now, right from promoting it for the Vincent Trust. Uh, well, it would be five, five plus years ago through to helping them obtain the outline ap uh, mm. application consent for the site. And then I assisted Crest. Nicholson, um, along with Chris, actually, um, he'll tell you that context in a minute, uh, on the 196, which are currently being built at the moment, and then um, been retained to assist Fernham Homes then uh, on the, the piece of land, which we'll talk to you about uh, in a few minutes. So, yeah, hope you can see I, I, I've got a good background and history. Um, I know the local issues. Um, I'm a resident of Kent as well, so um, not too far down the road, and our company's Kent-based too. So, um, yeah, just to give you that little bit of context. But, um, Chris, do you want to introduce yourself? Thanks, Matthew. So, good evening, everyone. Chris Lockhead, Development Director at Fernham Homes. And then, good evening, Matthew Dennis, Design Manager of Fernham Homes. Thank you. Um, Adrian, are you okay if we just share? A, we've pulled together a presentation. I'm not. I think we may just need the ability to be allowed to um, put it up on the screen if that's okay. Uh, Alison, I'll, I'll um, have a go at sharing the screen. Which looks like it's should be working. working now. Because... Can everyone see our screen? It's yes. there now. Yes. Brilliant technology. Okay. It's finest. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Um, well, thank you all for letting us join um, your meeting this evening and giving us the opportunity to uh, present to you. Um, as Matthew introduced, we're here to talk to you about the wider Lady Lane farm site. And I understand um, a short while ago you had uh, a presentation from Crest Nicholson in relation to their, oh, I guess if we call it their phase two part of, of the scheme that's currently a live submission. We're here to talk to you about the balance of the site. We'll take you through the presentation and show you exactly where the the, the area of land or the parcel of land that we we intend to talk about. Um, Matthew will share or Matt will share the presentation with Adrienne at the end of this meeting. And then, if I could just ask Alison, perhaps if questions could be held to the end, we've got a we, we'll allow a, a forum of questions at the end. And then, what I'll propose is that we send you the presentation yourself and, and the wider town council members can review that. And then we'll allow a period for you to follow up with any questions, or we can have a a further call, whatever is required in order to, to, to run through those. Um, but first of all, I just wanted to introduce Fernham Homes. So we're a SME house builder with a local focus solely operating in Kent. We've been established for around 24 years now by three individual shareholders that live on our patch. Our headquarters is in Tunbridge. Um, We've built a reputation of high quality delivery of developments over the over the time of the years that we've been operating. And we're going through a period of exponential growth at the moment. So we're seeking to grow our business from around 70 homes per annum to around 300 over the next five years. And that's all part of our ambition to form part of being the Kent's leading SME house building. So just a bit of background about what makes us different and why Fernham. So we've just put up some bullet points on here just to talk through. So we're privately owned. We don't have any red tape. We've got linear decision-making models. Um, we're very much focused on legacy. That drives one of the strengths of our brand being what it's been built into today. And we really care about the, the developments that we create. Um, and we take real pride in the schemes that we deliver because we want people to recognize us with that quality focus. We're very, we're, we're very much about a local supply chain. So much of our workforce and we procure as many of our um, materials that we can locally. 
we really, really, really care and invest in design that sits alongside our legacy and we'll come on to talk about some of our aims and aspirations of placemaking for the wider Lady Dame farm as we take you through our presentation. Um, because we're a privately owned business, we are very much delivery focused. That means that the commitments that we say to you, we, we seek to meet, we'll be honest and we'll tell you about the things that we can deliver and we'll chat through together the challenges that there may be with schemes and we'll always give you an honest approach to what we can put forward. We believe in proactive and transparent engagement, hence why we're talking to you at an early stage this evening. As, as I mentioned, we've had one or two pre-applications with the Borough Council now. And as part of that process, we obviously have to do an element of engagement with the borough, with the borough council first, and then we go out through a period of stakeholder consultation. So this is one of the first sessions that we've done. We're meeting with KCC Highways, KCC LLFA. We'll do some resident consultation as well as part of this process over the next few months. But we know how important sort of these large developments are to town councils and, and members so we wanted to come and engage with you at the earliest available opportunity um, and i'm sure members are all aware of the government's target around house building and delivery of homes for, for young people in order to get onto the housing ladder and smes such as Fernham homes are, are nationally important and recognized in order to help deliver that aspiration and goal and um, as Matthew very politely introduced, and we're working alongside the Vincent Trust. And I thought just at this stage, I just wanted to clarify a couple of um, points which have come out from our discussions with the Borough Council. Uh, and forgive me, um, Town Council members may well be aware of the different ownerships around um, the proposed larger strategic allocations in the local plan review. But just to, to sort of make it clear that the Vincent Trust are a very separate entity from Edward Vincent Limited, which are the active farming entity, which are on the brow of the hill. Um, and again, I'll show this on, on a site plan in a second. But um, we, we, we in the Vincent Trust are in control of everything to the east as it comes up to Love Lane. And then as we go further off out into the wider allocation, that's controlled by a completely separate entity but I'll make that clear on a plan. So just to give everyone a bit of a flavour for the vision for Lady Dane Farm, and I think it's fair to say the vision that Matthew and the Vincent Trust created when they very first brought this site forward is very much the same. And what we're now seeking to do with the balance of the site is bring that up to speed, refresh it. There was a substantial amount of employment that was proposed for that site. The employment market has fundamentally changed and we thought it'd just be helpful to the town council just to refresh, refresh our principles. So it's about an integrated community. We've got the existing community uh, to the, the, that's, that exists to the west of the site. We've got the Crest Nicholson development that's un, under construction. We'll also have the Crest Nicholson development of phase two, which is an allocation. Obviously, whether it's in the exact form as is submitted it will be determined by their planning application and we've got quite an extensive um, proposed allocation in the local plan review that we need to have our mind on and plan for in the case that that comes forward so um, we're looking at creating a, a hub of development it's focused around the community with recreational employment and residential uses within it we're talking about providing community uh, benefits so the provision of new retail units, we're proposing a day nursery, further employment opportunities and extending additional open space as part of a cohesive development. It will form all part of a mixed neighbourhood. We're, we're intending to consult on proposals for around 150 new homes. There'll be a variety of, of size of properties that will be included in that development alongside a policy compliant level of affordable housing. And we're also looking to provide um, a, a specific type of use of care for the older age group with um, we're working in partnership with a care home provider to deliver a 75 bed care home. Um, we'll talk you through our master plan, very much landscape led, working with the existing landscape assets of the site and the key views from the wider area creating new green infrastructure, really focusing around biodiversity net gain in the central open space that will be created and making sure that we've got connected habitat to allow the wildlife that's present on site and connecting to the new habitat that will be created. 
Um, and then really the focus to bring all of that together is about a high quality, locally reflective architectural vernacular all the way through from the types of dwellings that are pro proposed, the types of homes that are proposed, I should say, into the character of the landscaping, the street scene, uh, and then right into the various complementary uses that will form part of that development. So um, the plan on screen shows the exact site area that we're talking about. Um, and for those that are familiar with the site, unfortunately, Google hasn't quite caught up with the Crest Nicholson development that's been that, that sort of further advanced in its construction to the north. The Crest phase two proposal. I wonder if Matt, you can just show that on with your cursor on the screen oh, if you sorry, can. Chris. So cross phase two will be coming down into this area here. That's perfect, thank you. And then the separating line of the ownership basically follows that north-south line by the crest ownership. So the Vincent Trust are in control of the land where Matt's just delineating now, and then Edward Vincent Limited, the point I made earlier, is further off to the east. Okay. Cool. Perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. Just, just to give a bit of context of, of the site and um, for anyone who hasn't visited or been within the site, there's a few images that we'll just flick through on the next side, both from immediately outside the site by the existing public right of way, the bus stop that's outside, the track that crosses the site, and then uh, an image or two from within the site, looking out back towards the Crest Nicholson development. North, Thanks, Matt. So just talking about the, the parameters of the site. So one of the key um, criteria that we see as a site, just looking at, into it, is there was an existing um, access point established by the outline uh, planning permission. So we've highlighted the, that into the red arrow as it comes into the site. That's just to the south of the existing public right of way, which crosses the site and goes off into the open countryside further out to the east. That obviously connects back onto Love Lane, around in towards the Windermere Estate and the public right of way that runs um, very much back into the town centre up towards the train station, which is going to be, we see that as being quite a key connecting corridor. And it's an interesting one to plan for with the wider proposals, which are obviously at the Reg 19 local plan stage. But we see that link as being very much the heart of our scheme. And we'll, we can explain how we've incorporated that into our proposals. There's some existing hedges and windbreak planting that's shown around the site. They're shown on there. They're a characteristic of the site. The southern boundary adjoining to the to the railway is um, is is quite key in terms of um, having some uh, ecological habitat, and we see that needing to be very much um, retained uh, through our development proposals. And then just one sort of final point, just to to bring out on this um, plan, is that for anyone who knows the site. There's quite a significant um, levels difference as you come from the southeast corner and move towards the Crest Nicholson development and the land contours fall away in the order of eight to nine metres as you run across the site, which for the scale of site is relatively significant. Um, and that's particularly key then when you start to think about a couple of other matters. So the sort of yellow viewing corridor, which shown that runs um, almost southeast, northwest, there's a key view that's been picked out um, in all of the uh, due diligence that's been completed in, on the site, both by Edward Vincent Trust and by the council in their policy making documents as a view towards the St Mary's Charity Church, which we'll be looking to integrate as part of our scheme. Um, and then, of course, we can't forget about the conservation area, which runs around the existing cemetery just to the northern part of, of Lovelane. Thanks, man. Um, just to recap a little bit about the policy history of the site, um, and again, uh, and I'm sure members will be familiar with this, so the site um, in its entirety is allocated in the Bearing Fruits local plan as, uh, uh, as residential to the north, there was further residential proposed land reserved for a primary school and then employment development to the sort of southern half with an expansion phase. That then transposed into the outline planning permission that was sought by the Vincent Trust, which we understand that the element that we're talking to you about, the council considered to have now lapsed um, and therefore can't, it is not capable of implementation. And therefore the only phase that's been implemented from that specific planning permission is the Crest Nicholson element to the north. Um, if you just skip on that. 
Perfect. So then moving into what the council's way of thinking is now, um, the council have obviously evolved their thinking since the Bearing Fruits local mm -hmm. plan and they consulted on their local plan review earlier this year. Within that um, local plan review, obviously a much wider area of land, as you can see, um, has been considered for being allocated as part of a, a sort of a Eastern Faversham expansion, as the council call it. So that includes land that's in multitude of ownerships. Um, for this site specifically, um, the, this is included as part of the policy which is known as Lady Dane Farm. Um, there's quite a wide criteria for that because it basically includes all of the land uh, to the northern stretch of the A2. And there were some early thoughts from the council on this indicative master plan as to how development might come forward. We've reviewed that alongside our team of landscape visual impact consultants, Matthew and his team, our architects, our engineers, ecologists, e ecologists et cetera. And we've just evolved our way of thinking um, on the proposals, which we show sort of overleaf. And there's a couple of emerging thoughts that have come out of it on this, some reallocation of the employment, more closely integrated residential development, uh, better reflecting the urban grain of the Windermere estate, the Crest Nicholson development to the north, looking at the more wider allocation and its wider landscape constraints as it attaches itself to the open countryside towards Brentley Corner, um, which is obviously going to be quite a sensitive buffer to this allocation should it go forward. That said, this plan was prepared um, a few months ago now, and it just gives town council members the, just some of the backlog of some and, and, and background to the dialogue that we've been having with the borough council but actually we've sort of developed this slightly further and very shortly i'll hand over to matt just to give you a bit of thinking about how we've then taken this a, a further step on really um so just to go back to the heart of our development i think the one thing that we're really keen to work with uh, swell borough council and the economic development team is delivering a deliverable employment development here and generating real jobs that are tangible, they can be qualified and we can work with partners here. So obviously, as I said, the site does did have an outline planning commission in the past. One of the reasons why that didn't come forward is the type of employment development that was permitted under that outline planning permission potentially wasn't market facing, perhaps maybe the time of period that it took to secure the outline planning permission some of the originally proposed uses such as a pub restaurant unfortunately those opportunities surpassed and Marston's who were intended to be coming onto the Lady Dane farm, farm site found an alternative location just in the south of the A2 mm -hmm. the travel lodge that went on to the Perry Court development so some of the original uses that were proposed just haven't quite been Weren't, the timing of them weren't just quite right. And now what we've been doing is working very closely with Harrisons, who are a, who are a sort of a swale-based commercial agent, who have got a real good understanding of the commercial market in that area, pulling together earlier interest, uh, early interests, I guess, if you like, from a number of um, providers who we can work in partnership with and enter into an agreement with early as we're working through these planning proposals so that by the time we get to planning committee and by the time the, the development's in its infancy those jobs are real they are there we've got um, people signed up to deliver the employment uses so just to give uh, town council members a bit of a flavor of the feedback that we've seen from from harrison's just to understand um, how the employment market works there um the Faversham is a real sort of a local focus for demand of spaces. So that means that employers are likely to be local. We're not attracting large national chains, uh, particularly on the enterprise side of, of the business. We had a, a significant amount of office space proposed under the Outline Planning Commission. That market wasn't there before COVID-19. And unfortunately, COVID-19 has pretty much destroyed the office market. So there needs to be a new real think about the way that office space comes forward. Um, the last industrial scheme that was delivered in, in Faversham, which is a bit of an aspiration of the Borough Council, was a scheme called the Foundry. Um, that, didn't, that wasn't particularly successful and actually something that's more enterprise led rather than industrial led. So smaller units that cater for startups, that kind of, those kind of businesses is more what we're thinking about going forward. 
um, large warehousing is a sort of tens of thousands of square foot of large warehousing is is not considered suitable there are other parts of the county which are considered more viable so the uses that we're proposing are a small convenience store to sit in with the existing community of the Windermere development the Crest Nicholson scheme and our additional development there so something that's around the 4,000 square foot mark, your local grab a loaf of butter, a, a loaf of bread, butter, milk, etc. That 15 minute community where you can walk to the shops to get those daily essentials. And we've got strong interest from um, co-op and Sainsbury's local to come into this location. Um, delivering a, a day nursery. Again, we've got strong interest from day nursery operators. This is a key nodal and transition point as people traverse around Faversham for work, etc., go out, come home on a daily basis. And there's obviously a, a volume of homes that will be created in this area. So there's a need for a day nursery. I've already mentioned our care home partnership. We've got a care home operator there that's on board and we've signed, signed terms with them to deliver a 70 box, five bed care home on site. And then the intention is to deliver somewhere in the region of 40,000 square foot of starter units. So there'll be a plethora of uses, but it will be anything from, you know, an artist to an early distribution supply chain. Some people may use it as a part of an electrical business, a plumbing business, you know, right through to professional services in, in this location. So we've got interest from a local recruitment consultant, consultant firm, so professional services as well. So just a real hub of different use classes that will come together and flexibly use space, but local people, local businesses. So that's kind of the, the, the sort of changing use from the, the, the employment. And I'm going to be quiet now and hand over to Matt and give a, let Matt go through a little bit about how we've developed our thinking and proposals into something that we can visually present to you. Thanks, Chris. So kind of following on from Chris's introduction, both on the, the uses for the site and what we're intending to deliver on the site, as well as the opportunities and constraints within and around the site. We've been working together with our expert design team. Um, so we've been working with, with Amiga, who are architects together with all our various other consultants that Chris has touched upon to take the, the brief that Chris has, has presented to you all and taking into consideration the, the various constraints and opportunities to actually come up with a comprehensive proposal for the site. So this involves, um, if you're looking to the image to the left, focusing upon using the exit, you know, a, a deliverable access point into the site so as to, to minimise interference on Love Lane. And actually it's, it's a pragmatic and deliverable solution. We're looking to deliver open space to the north of the site. This will serve as a, a buffer between our site and the Crest development to the north. So something that can actually be used by all and that's something that i'm sure you've all picked up was actually picked up on the outline application which preceded this we're also the focus of development is also to capitalize upon and make best use and enhance where possible the existing public right of way that runs across the site so as to enhance connectivity enhance permeability connect the site to Faversham, but also connect Faversham to the site so as to make it as a comprehensive and as settled development as possible, whilst also looking to deliver green infrastructure through the site. You know, again, picking up on what Chris has touched upon, having a, a landscape benefit as well as an, an environmental and ecological benefit. So with those various kind of components and, and aspirations, we've then moved from those first two elements that I just touched upon to work through to a framework that evolved into something like what you can see on the screen now. So just to run you through, um, we, you know, the idea is to have a, an access, a principal an access road coming off Love Lane that serves the whole of the site. Um, we're also looking for retail provision. We're looking for a direct pedestrian, pedestrian link um, served off the prowl. We're looking to deliver a care home again, what Chris has touched upon. Um, which and the site is also to have green corridors with suds within so as to manage the drainage and, and ensure that the development that we're proposing has no 
negative impact upon the media and wider area that it is that it is within. So moving on from this slightly evolved framework that you see in front of you now, we thought it'd be better, sorry, <laughs> it wouldn't be our presentation without a slight technical hitch, would it? So, um, so this, the development, you, the proposal you see in front of you now, this is, just to reiterate, this is very much a work in progress. Um, even today, Chris, myself and, and, and Matt, we were having conversations about ways that it can be, be improved. But nevertheless, this is a good time to show you where we're at at the moment. And what you'll see is the scheme um, delivers or proposes to deliver the day nursery, the care home, the enterprise units, um, there's land reserved for phase two um, enterprise units or a two or three primary school, depending on how that evolves. Um, as well as retail um, at the site, at the one of the site's principal access points, again, what Chris has touched upon. So locating these services and these facilities close to the site access makes them as accessible um, and as, as practical for not just the development that they're within, but actually the wider area and, and Faversham as a whole. Um, and then to the north and to the north, East of these uses that we've just uh, touched upon, there is the residential element of the proposal, which is circa 150 units. Again, this is a work in progress, so that number may, may change slightly as we evolve the scheme. And that is to then face on to the existing crest development that's being built out at the moment. But what we've also done is take into consideration the phase two development, which is currently in the um, going through the application process at the moment. Again, this is something that is subject to change. Um, we're not saying that this is exactly how it will be, but we're basing it upon what we know at the moment. So taking that development into consideration, we've then facilitated this green buffer through our site, which buffers between our development and crests, which also delivers um, the SUDS features. At the moment, a cricket pitch, which is again, subject to conversation and development, and then links in with the open space, that Crest are delivering as part of their phase two, so as to de deliver as a comprehensive scheme um, as is possible. Good. So I think, you know, we, we just wanted to provide a, an early thought stage of where we are. We're at the very early stage of our proposal, so I appreciate this, that as it always does, it looks quite developed, but we have to generally take some point of a, of a point to start a conversation pictorially with stakeholders with the council etc and we're really throwing open this process to some feedback really we've we've been fortunate that um eddie thomas who's one of the borough councillors for this area attended our pre-application our last pre-application meeting with swale borough council i think it's fair to say that we got some very useful insight of some of the key issues that eddie um spoke mm -hmm. to us about i'd say probably more so off-site and some of the highway matters that the town council are working on and we've taken those on board and we're liaising with KCC highways on those and Eddie and I have an open dialogue uh, about those and then Eddie apologies if you are in on the meeting because I can only see about four or five people in the <laughs> in the chat list so uh, but but also to say um, that um, Eddie did pass on some uh, some other comments in relation to affordable housing provision etc so they're all being considered as part of of the proposals um we're keen to get the um town council's thoughts we're keen to get thoughts from the members of the public and the types of things that we're keen to talk about really are probably a little bit the open space it's a significant part of the development the outline planning permission reserved an area for a cricket pitch as matt said that's unlikely to come forward now because Faversham Town Cricket Club have got tenure over the Duchy of Cornwall land, which is where this relocation was going. So there's an area of land that needs a bit of thinking about. Um, we are having some dialogue with other sports providers um, for, for alternative sport provision. But again, if the town council wants to see that come forward in a, in a different way, then we're open to that. Could it be a trim trail? Could it be an integrated sort of... Uh, circuit for exercise with um, some nature nature play in it could it be a wildlife area you know there's lots of various options that mm. we're keen to get some views on um alongside the generality of of the proposals really 
Thank you. Cool. Thank you very much. So we'll, we'll, we'll sort of throw over to you guys to see if there's any immediate questions. Um, happy to take the floor as they come to you, Alison. Right, right. Um, I've still got you on screen, so I can't... I'll, I'll stop sharing now. Um, Thank you. See that for the rest of the evening, do they? So I assume it's just a pause share. Just stop sharing. Oh, right. Stop share, that's the one. <laughs> and apologies for the whistle stop tour, but we're conscious of our time, which we've overrun slightly. <laughs> That's brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, you are aware there's a care home at Pericor, aren't you? I know you've mentioned the other. Yeah, so you are aware of that. Um, yeah. Right. I don't know if anyone has any questions. Any councillors? Councillor Martin. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, just a, a quick one, really. Looking at the last but one slide, I think it was. Are you are you in discussion with Stagecoach about? Um, perhaps an in and out for buses going uh, rather than because it looks like your buses are going to be right on top of your uh, where the existing stop is will be right on top of the uh, convenience store. Yeah, that is something that um, has been raised, Councillor Martin, and it's actually something that um, Councillor Eddie Thomas raised when 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 we had our pre-application meeting. I'd agreed with um, Councillor Thomas to follow up with KCC Highways on that, which we've done. And if I'm honest, the answer wasn't particularly helpful from them. And the reason why it wasn't particularly helpful is because they said if the wider allocation that we showed on that plan is in the much the bigger strategic development came forward mm -hmm. they would prefer to see it come through um the what i'm going to call the edward vincent limited and the atwood land which is to the east of our site and connect immediately into gravely road mm -hmm. um, and then come back down towards whitsville road to get back towards the town center um, however, what we agreed as a takeaway from our meeting with KCC Highways is that we would, off our own backs, have a dialogue with Stagecoach to understand whether they would consider looping into our site. But I think the concern, um, Councillor Martin, was about it was it was like when did they call it dead, not dead zones or something, where basically people found the route more unattractive because no one was getting on or off. So um, we can keep you up dated on that, Councillor Martin, it's something that, that Councillor Thomas has asked me to do, so it's on my radar. I'll, I'll declare an interest on that one because I live very close to the site uh, <laughs> yeah. and do use that stop. Um, yeah. Okay. And, the, and I'm also going to uh, hang back on the uh, open space section because I'm afraid I was one of the people at Faversham Cricket Club at the time when this first came up and, um, and then the Duchy made an offer that couldn't be refused, I believe. So I'll uh, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There's um there's a couple of questions in the the chat on the side here. Um, one of which the first one I says will the affordable be uh, I think you mean pepper potted throughout the site. Um, the council like to um require developments to um spread affordable housing throughout throughout sites. Um, there's always a push and pull because generally the registered providers who manage and take on those affordable units prefer them to be in, you know, one or two locations for management, for ease of management. So what generally happens is that they're, they're small clusters around the site and that generally seems to be the sort of happy medium that everybody comes to. Um, but um, we're, we're probably a level above that at the moment, to be perfectly honest, in terms of identifying which units are which um, at, at this point. But um, yeah, certainly the, the council's policies require us to, to spread it across the site rather than being all clustered in one area. Yeah. Thank you. Matt, Matt if I just take the next question, which says um, uh, just in consideration for allotments. And um, I know that this was discussed from my previous involvement in the site when I was with Chris Nicholson. Um, and I think probably I'd be keen to understand some thoughts on management for them. I would say personally uh, for us in terms of managing the open space, we wouldn't be, we'd be happy to look and consider some allotments to be provided um, as part of the wider landscape area. The question always falls down to management. So I guess perhaps maybe one to have a think about um, and perhaps Adrian, if I could ask if you could perhaps follow up as to whether the town council... Yeah, we do manage four lots. 
And I think yeah. we are in line to get more from other developments. So it's definitely something yeah. that we would be very interested in. So perhaps maybe if we could just have some dialogue on that ourselves, yeah. that would yeah, be sure. really helpful so that we can just frame that. So I, I can, Matt and I can take that away. We'll follow up with you sort of separately after the meeting just to get some data on that. That's that's fine. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions in the chat box? Um, no, that's it, I think. Oh, there was just so many questions. Oh, Claire Martin. Uh, why a care home and not bungalow so that LD can still live independently? The, the, the care home is intended to be provided as part of one of the employment uses because it's job generating. It employs the whole way through the employment sector, all the way through from unskilled workers through to skilled, trained professional workers as well. So the, the proposal for the care home is simply driven by the fact there's an active demand. We've been approached by a provider and um, the, it, it generates a good level of, um, of job generation. I think, I think there's, there's one further question yeah. that looks like it's either going to come in or... Joe um, Jay, how did you hear me? Can you hear me? Chris, yeah. yeah Thank can. you. Very briefly, there is provision for pedestrian crossings of Love Lane back up at the mini roundabout Gravely Road. Future, mm -hmm. um, the, the traffic lights future down um, joining Love Lane to the A2. We have the public right of way ZF28 coming across uh, very near your access to the bus shelter. Do you have yes. new access coming in? <clears throat> what about pedestrian crossings to the convenience stores? That's something that we would, um, we've discussed with KCC Highways and Fernand would be, and, and the Vincent Trust would be committed to offering as part of this proposal to make sure that the development is connected to the existing footpath network and vice versa from the existing development in Windermere would be connected across. That's, um, the, uh, that's, the, that, that's the question, yes, because but at the moment it's a 40 limit. There are plans to look at the speed limit in Love Lane. Um, and at the moment, there's, there's no particular crossing point. No. So, so, Chris, the two points you've just raised there, speed limit and pedestrian crossing, we're, up, we're aware of the Town Council's um, lower speed plan. And annoyingly, as I understand it from Councillor Thomas, that's just the wrong side of Love Lane at the moment. Um, and we're discussing with KCC Highways whether through this development, we could do a separate traffic regulation order to bring the speed down from the railway bridge to the Gravely Whitstable Road, no, to the northern side of the um, cemetery, whether that stretch could be um, reduced in speed down to 20 mile an hour, consistent with the town council's plan and the integration of, um, of a pedestrian crossing. So if I could ask of anything of some feedback, the more support you can give us in this um, format um, to provide uh, some commentary on that, it will support our negotiations with KCC. Brilliant, keep up the pressure, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Right, I think, unless there are any other questions. I think we um, need to move on. Yeah, I think okay. we do. Thank you very much. All thank you for your time. Thank you very much for your time. Much Great to keep it. in touch. Do keep in touch with us. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye. Bye. Right. I think we can move on now to public question time. Um, do we have any questions from the public this evening? Martin Collins. Right. If we can hear. Yes. I can see Martin. Yes, sadly, so can't you see myself as well? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, um, so I think I've got three minutes. Um, the tin church, the hot tin, is immediately opposite us in this house, and they've got a planning variation coming up soon, which I object to um, basically in terms of noise. Go through the history of the building, it was built as a tin tabernacle in 1885 and for the first 65 years it was a church and as such it functioned as a, in a religious way it, there was no um, no secular involvements so there would have been some church music 
um, hand pump be a bellows organ, but there'll be no, no, no routine evening music. Mm. When it stopped being, um, uh, when it's deconsecrated, it had a life as um, a scout hall, uh, a gym for the school, mm. a camping shop, and then a joinery. <clears throat> In none of those um, uh, not occupations did, did was was, um, was were, were evening performances allowed. It was a, a you know a, a day, day daytime thing. Uh, the last owner, last private owner, did not hold uh, public uh, evening events. In 2018, a planning came planning application came in for um, building a not building sort of um, creating a community sorry, cafe yeah, and art centre. Yeah, um, uh, and that envisaged there, there would be monthly, possibly monthly, music events in, of an evening. That would be of a classical or acoustic nature. Um, but that plan was actually rejected by Faversham Town Council, and the Swale Environmental uh, Authorities suggested there should be a condition of no amplified music, and they wanted us um, a so sound good. audit of the building. Mm. Uh, those were um, not not acted upon. I think because it was envisaged there'd be so little music that it wasn't worth doing. But over the time, the, the, the hot tin has gone into more and more evening amplified or heavily amplified uh, music, uh, not classical, not acoustic. Um, that causes us quite a big problem. Um, I've, I've, I've got my own little route. Um, this, this planning application has got lots of letters of support from people supporting the hot tin, um, of which I would I would counter by saying that yes, they've had a lovely time. They they've chosen things they want to go to. They've paid for it. I'm sure they've had a good time. Then they've gone home. But we living here, which is 26 feet away from the tin church, have to have have to effectively attend every event, each and every event. We have no choice in the matter. We, our buildings here. In those terms as well, our, our building is actually 26 feet away from the Tin Church, which is the same as the width of the Tin Church. So a loudspeaker placed on the left, on the east wall, east wall, is the same distance from our building as it is from the other, other interior wall of the church. We're talking close. Uh, we have had problems with noise uh, over the, before COVID, we had problems with noise and there have been two breaches in 2019, which were mm -hmm, reported. And of course, any breach in time is, is, is because of the noise. The noise yeah. is, mm -hmm. the noise is, is, is um, So any increase, if they were, you know, had that increase for music up to 11, that, it, you know, there's more noise to us. People are spending longer drinking for that extra hour, and then there's more noise as, as people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so we we've never had any problems with the daytime events no, or the so. quieter yeah. events. It's these um, the amplified music, and part of their proposal now is they're emphasising their hope to for private hires for birthday parties and wedding receptions. And I think we've all been to that sort of event and know that they are not sedate quiet affairs. And so you know, it is with some dread really that we anticipate those sorts of events going on to 11 o'clock and beyond. If I might just quickly address a little problem with letters that um, the four houses that are closest to the Tim Church, one is for sale, one has been sold, one has got new occupants that moved in during COVID, got no experience with noise, and there's us. So we end up as a lone voice crying. Yeah, yeah. Um, there is, you know, there's a finite number of people yeah. that, is, that are affected. That will be by, got heavily affected, noise. yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it, it, it's been very stressful and, mm. um, you know, we're constantly clock watching, is it going to go off at 10? Um, yeah. yeah, what next? Yeah. What's the so even, even on the, the night, it's not functioning in that way. It's, it's still you know, all the anxiety mm. of, you know, what's it going to be like tonight? Mm. Thank Shall you. Just... Thank you for that. Yes. We Have will. We...
take that all into consideration when we get to that item on planning and quite understand your concerns. So thank you very much. If you want to continue listening, do. Um, and we will start going through the agenda now. Thank you. Right, if we start with apologies for absence. Uh, apologies received from councillors Barker, Irwin and Rowland. Thank you. Um, two declarations, pecuniary and non-pecuniary interests. Do we have anyone with any items? No, I think that's a no. To receive and accept as a true record the minutes of the Town Council planning meeting held on the 19th of July, which I've got here, copy of. Are we all happy with those minutes? Madam Mayor, can I propose that we accept the minutes? I, absolutely. Um, I'm happy to second that. They're very straightforward. Can we all vote to accept those minutes? Anyone that we can see? I think Tom Clark can see. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And if we move on to receive the planning schedule dated the 19th of July. Again, I feel that looked very straightforward unless anyone has anything they wish to bring up. Councillor Williams. I'm, I'm happy to propose we accept that schedule, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Um, again, I'm happy to second that. Uh, if we could all vote on that. Thank you. Right, to consider and make representations to the relevant authorities planning applications. If we start with 2150-3795 TCA, 19 Norman, no, Roman Road, conservation area notification, Silver Birch, one, reduce the height of the tree from 14 foot, removing five to six foot and bringing the final height to nine foot. Councillor Williams, do you have any comments? Yeah, I, um, I'd propose no objection. There's nothing that seems yes. out of to me, so no objection. Thank you. Uh, do we have a seconder? Councillor Perkin? And can we all vote on that? Thank you. 2150-4065 TPOA, five spill it close, tree preservation order application to repollard the lime tree to previous pollarding points, approximately 45% reduction, previously pollarded in, in 2017. Uh, Councillor Williams. Thank you. Um, again, there's nothing that um, stands out as being, yeah. being wrong with this application, so I'd propose no objection. Thank you. Do we have a second, uh, Councillor Saunders? Yeah, happy to second. Thank you. Can we all vote on that one? Bye. 21, 50, 34, 52, full and 2150-3453 LBC, internal and external refurbishment of existing building to include one two-bedroom apartment, one bedroom apartment. It's a revision of 2050-1860 and 2050-1861. Happy ward. <coughs> Are there any comments? On this application. Councillor Saunders. Uh, thank you Madam Mayor. Um, I, uh, I'm concerned about this um, application particularly, oh. particularly the ground floor uh, because there's a loss of uh, retail uh, which has been replaced by well a kind of entrance to uh, the accommodation as far as I can see and this is um, a um, a retail premises in in the town um, centre, um, so I think we should probably uh, object uh, to this as it as it's proposed at the moment. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? 
Councillor Perkin. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm inclined to agree with Councillor Saunders on um, objecting to it for a number of reasons, really. Um, firstly, what Councillor Saunders already said, so I can hear myself echoing it. Sorry. Um, but also, um, the um, conservation officer at Swale has said that he hasn't got huge concerns around um, what the outside of the building looks like, but they did, did bring up um, that they'd like some more um, evidence on a staircase that um, is in the middle of the building. Um, then beyond that, I think that the accommodation is quite small. And I know in previous conversations we've had about the size of um, accommodation in Faversham, we have passed comment that um, the accommodation itself is quite um, small compared to what we would want. So um, I'd add that to the objections as well. Thank you. Are there any other comments? So can we vote? Do we have a proposer and a seconder to object? Can we all vote on that? I think we should. Thank you. 2150 3526 full erection. Uh, 21 503 562. Yes, it's incorrect, isn't it? It's, um, yeah, that was Vicarage Field. So 13 Vicarage Street, erection of a single story rear extension. Any comments there? That's Abby Ward. Councillor Perkin. Um, yeah, I was just going to propose no objection. I didn't think we okay. could object on. Absolutely. Are there any comments? I'd be happy to second that. Could we vote on that? Yep. Thank you. Right. 2150 full, 2150 36 49 LBC. Bank for Court. Street, removal of external ATM and night safe, infill with ply, MDF, and paint to match existing finish, removal of internal counters and all Barclays signage. Are there any comments on that? Councillor Williams. Um. I mean, I mean, obviously, with with the bank closed, they're going to have to take off their have to take their things off of the building. Um, I, I'm I, I personally can't see a reason why we would object to that because they have to, that's something they need to do. Um, my assumption is that they're just making it um, putting it back so that there's no um, visible kind of hole where the, the ATM etc was. Um, so yeah, I, I I would say we should we shouldn't object. Any other comments? Councillor Saunders. Councillor Saunders. Um, yeah, I'd probably agree with uh, Councillor Williams, but um, there is a risk that um, yeah. if it's done yeah. in a kind of uh, quick and easy way and on a, on a kind of rather temporary basis that it, it might not look very good. So I think we, while not objecting, I think we should ask that... Uh, Swale ensure that uh, the work is done to a good standard so aesthetically um, it uh, retains the, the feel of the current building. Thank you. I agree with that. Yes. Do we all agree on that? Councillor Williams. It's probably not relevant, but can, can we also just add in at this point our, our disappointment again that the bank is having to change uh, yeah. from being a bank to not being a bank? I know it's not, I know it's not a consideration for planning. Yeah. But yeah. I just think it's worth mentioning. We miss them. Yes. Okay. Can we all vote on that? Thank you. 2150-3674 full. 27 Millfield Road, not street, isn't it? Millfield Road. I've got street on my... Yeah, yes, it should be road, Millfield I think. Road, yeah. Right. Erection of a single storey rear extension and a new front porch. Does anyone have any issues with that? No. Councillor Williams. 
Uh, I can't see any problems. It's an end of, end of terrace house, so I propose no objection. Thank you. I'm happy to second that. If we can all vote on that. Great. Yeah, thank you. 2150 full. 2150 3744 LBC, Nether Court, Abbey Farm, Abbey Road. Listed building consent for demolition of a still framed barn and erection of a new one and a half storey extension to provide additional accommodation and garage facilities. Do we have any comments on that proposal? No. Nope. Councillor Saunders. Um, well, I, I was going to express a concern about this because um, this seems to be um, taking out a, a, a barn and re replacing it with a, um, a, a kind of accommodation extension. And uh, I suppose my question is, you know, whether that is actually, as this is a listing build, listed building, is, is really retaining the character of uh, the building. I'd be interested to hear what other councillors think. Are there any other comments? Councillor Perkin? Um, yeah, it was my understanding that the, um, that the barn itself isn't in great condition. Um, I think that there's a policy in the upcoming local plan that says that in general we should be protecting um, we should be protecting listed buildings, but that is it, it, there are circumstances where um, there could be a convincing case made for alteration. Um, I'm, I'm inclined to agree with Councillor Saunders that I don't know that there is a convincing case for that, but I also think that the barn's not in fabulous condition. Thank you. Any other comments? So uh, we have Councillor Saunders, are you proposing we object? Can't, can't hear. Is it me or is it you? <laughs> Uh, sorry, Madam Mayor, I, my uh, speaker went off. I've, I've missed the last bit of the... Sorry, are you proposing that we object? Yes. You're mute. I am, I am proposing that we object um, and that so we ask the um, Israel officers to look closely about whether this is actually justified. And... Uh, Councillor Perking, are you happy to support that? Yes. So can we all vote that that will be the way we go? Thank you. 2150-3708 full 99 Athelston Road, erection of a single storey rear and side extension and new canopy over front door and bay window, including replacement windows, front door and render to the front elevation, new blocked paved drive and boundary fence. That all looks straightforward. Um, Councillor Williams? Um, I don't think there's any reason to object. I think um, it, the other properties quite often have similar sort of um, changes. The only thing I would like to point out or make a comment on is about the, the paving of the front garden. And I know, I don't know what it's got at the mm -hmm. moment, actually, to, to be perfectly honest, but um, with, with, with recent kind of, when we see the recent runoff of rain water onto a highway, it does cause a significant problem. And it's a shame when gardens are completely paved, though, which this one has. I know it's got a sort of small bit, um, mm. flower bed, but um, it's just a comment, really. I don't think it's a reason we can object to, but... Um, yeah. Just a comment I wanted to make. They put proper soakaways in. It says new block, so I would imagine there is something there already that's been replaced. New. Um, so we won't object. Do I have a seconder for that? No objection. Councillor Perkin, could we all vote on that? Thank you. And now we come to 2150 3772 full. 
St Saviour's Church, Whitstable Road. Section 73, application for variation of condition two, permanent change of use. Four, to allow external lighting. And seven, to allow music to see Sunday to Thursday at 10 p.m., Friday, Saturday at 11 p.m. Pursuant to application 18501494 full. For change of use of space to reinstate its previous early historical use for the local community and as a centre for the local cultural arts and to provide food and drink. Uh, we have heard the comments, obviously, from probably the, the one house that is very close, very, very close. Um, has anyone got any other comments to add? Councillor Hook. Mayor, I, my view is the Town Council needs to oppose this. I think the venue is really unsuitable for late night music. It's not insulated and I know already a lot of local residents have had problems with noise travelling, quite a, a wide area actually and we know that just behind there is some accommodation for very vulnerable people and also the, all of the residential accommodation around there is is very dense there must be hundreds of people living in a two minute walk of there and this building is is made of very thin material it's not mm. suitable to be a live music venue at night time in my opinion a daytime cafe i think makes a lot more sense mm. Mm. um uh, and I'm very sorry to have to oppose something that people want want to do here, but I really do think it's the wrong location and we should oppose it on that basis. Thank you. Councillor Williams? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in a similar mind, really. I, I, it, it's, a, it's a very difficult um, application because of the, um, you know, what, 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 they, what they do in there is, 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 is obviously popular with certain people. Um, but, it, but I, I agree with Councillor Hook. It's, it's the nature of the building and where it's located makes it very impractical for that sort of late late night economy. Really, if it was in the town centre, it's a brick built building with more installation. It could be um, more suitable. And I just don't feel comfortable, um, you know, hearing the concerns from residents that I've spoken to. Obviously, it's you know in my ward. Um, mm. I don't. I don't. Um, I, I I would agree with a, to object on this occasion, unfortunately. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Saunders. Thank you. Um, I, I mean, I agree that this is a difficult issue where there are, are con obviously conflicting uh, interests. Um, however, I think, I think we need to remember a number of things. Firstly, this is a very successful, um, or was before the lockdown, a very successful community project, which I think a lot of people in the town feel has had it added significant value to uh, the local community and to the town. And I note in the um, responses from the public, um, there are a whole number of members of uh, the public who live quite close to these premises that uh, are keen to uh, see it uh, uh, get its license and, and carry on operating. Um, I, I also feel that the location we're looking at is, is on a main road. Um, there's a, a public house quite near to it. I gather there the, the have been other uh, licensed premises on the road in, in, in the past. So I don't think we're, we're looking at a quite suburban location here. The, the main issue that we're looking at, I think, is the issue of noise. And I, I, I would, uh, rather than uh, the town council objecting um, to the, this premises uh, having a license, I'd be happier if we were asking Swale to um, monitor noise and, and monitor noise uh, conditions rather than objecting to um, the organisation uh, receiving a, a license and being able to put up uh, the lighting. Uh, I think it's established itself uh, locally and I think it uh, would be good if it was able to carry on operating. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'd like to say I have seen a, a wedding party go there. I've seen, I think, a silver wedding party. They tend to go 
in the afternoon. I don't think they've gone on till late evening. I think there is a need and I think, yes, there could be parties, but maybe not the ones that go on late with loud music. That That's the worry, I think, for people. Um, not that it's used for parties and um, celebrations, but it's the hours that they're going on to. There is no parking close by. Um, the recreation ground parking closes at seven. So at night, I would imagine everyone will be walking. Um, I think the nearest car park's the Institute. So I'm very unsure about it. Um, I think Councillor Saunders, you're right. Um, maybe someone needs to go and um, check the volume. Um, that's the correct volume. Um, but then look at the hours that it's allowed. Um, that's my comment. Um, has anyone else got any other comments? Uh, Councillor Perkin. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I, in, as, same as my colleagues, really, I've had conversations with residents quite recently about um, the concerns that they have around um, this application getting a later license. Um, one thing that I would raise is that in previous the previous application they had said that there wouldn't be um, amplified music and I'm not entirely sure what's happened with that in the interim period whether that's something we need to ask the licensing officers about at Swayo and haven't had the opportunity to do that today. Mm. Um, I, can, I hear what Councillor Saunders is saying about the yeah. community value of the of the building I think that the company that run it are doing some good things for um, local employment, they're doing some admirable things in terms of um, providing apprenticeships um, and uh, providing arts opportunities for people but I think that it's absolutely crucial that the residents that are concerned about the noise levels um, have their concerns addressed and whether that is at this point objection or whether that is um, at this point offering no objection and um, putting stipulations on that that the um, licensing officers go out and do a thorough investigation of noise levels and put in um, some planning stipulations on the license that that's where where I'm not entirely sure I think I can see community benefit and also community downsides to it so it's quite complicated for me from the conversations that I've had around it um yeah so I'm, I'm not sure I do think Councillor Hook is right as well. There is church house um, where there are very vulnerable people in there, uh, loud music at night. I don't know how it would affect some of those people that live there. Um, there's an awful lot to consider, I think, really. So are we, uh, is anyone proposing that we um, object? No. Are we proposing that we go back to Swell and ask them? Sorry, Madam Mayor, I, I, did, did Councillor Hook propose object? I can't. I think yes, he did propose object. Yes. We've since spoken, of course. Right. I don't know and what is. do we have a, a seconder for the objection? Well, I, I second. Thank you. Councillor. If the proposal still stands, then I'll second it. Councillor Hook has said he is proposing objection, but his battery is run out. Okay. I missed that. So do we do we need to vote on that or do we go to the amendment? Do we go to Councillor Saunders now? Uh, Councillor Hook's proposed objection and I've seconded objection. Second it. Well, can we vote on that then? I would vote for that. So we've got three, four. Are you abstaining against objection? Councillors Perkin and Saunders. I'm going to abstain. Okay. And Councillor Saunders, you're on mute. Uh, I was voting against objecting. Thank you. Okay, that's still three in favour of objecting, one abstaining, one against. Thank you. So we go on to 2150, 3778 full, six lines place, Faversham, insertion of replacement second floor front window, repointing to front side and repairs to boundary wall. 
Councillor Perkin. Can I please propose that we defer the last three applications because the um, guild is pretty be much for the councillors now. Uh, I think that's correct. I think you are already at the town hall. I certainly have got to get there, so it will be another five minutes before I could get there. Um, so is that fine with the town clock? Can we? I can ask, obviously we don't need to get it until the 6th of September. So someone right. might say no, but I can ask. We go, I was just thinking we could do the last three after the full council. They are all fairly straightforward, but um, yes, we need to get on with the town council. Is that okay? I will see you all shortly or as soon as we can all get there. Okay, thank you. Good night.